Hey, what's up, YouTube? Look, we had 150 subscribers. I didn't even get a chance to say thank you to you first 100 subscribers. Man, it's been amazing. Such a blessing. I am so appreciative of each and every one of you that's reached out, that's liked, that's commented, that's subscribed, taking time out that day to watch these videos. Hopefully, we can continue to put out great content and interact together. I can't thank you all enough. I'm not gonna take too much more of your time, but I got some great things planned in the coming weeks, coming months. For instance, this week, many of you have asked me about subnetting. I'm gonna give it a try. I've been really working on a plan to put out um, about three different videos Maybe two, maybe three. Haven't decided yet. I'm still working on it. the format um, to put out these subnetting videos, which I pray and hope will help you on your CCNA and just networking journey, period. Because I know for me, um, subnetting was a mountain for me to climb, but I was able to climb it. And hopefully I can sit down and put out some great videos to help you along with your journey. With that being said, Thursday morning, the video will be up. If you have elected to receive notifications, hopefully you'll get a notification in your inbox with that subnet and video. If not, turn on notifications, and then you can be the first to see the video. And please, leave comments, interact, like, dislike. That's the only way that I will know if I'm giving you valuable information. Okay, the first thing we wanna talk about if you're working on your CCNA, CCNP, the first thing you want to do is print out your exam topics. When I took my CCNA, these are the actual exam topics from ICND 1, um, 100-101, and ICND 2, 200-101. Print these out. These will tell you everything that you need to know. I'll put a link in the description for these exam topics. These are actually the current ICND 1 and ICND 2. It tells you all the topics that are on the exam. Now you should th study these thoroughly and have a clear understanding of what each technology is and how it's broken down, how it's configured, and how to troubleshoot it. And here's the composite for the CCNA. Now, another thing, a lot of people ask me, you know, about the books and how I study or whatever. Well, here's, here's an example of how I break down a book. This is Todd Lamley's CCNA book. It's the composite for the, it's the old book actually, the 100-101, 200-101, and the 200-120. Now when I break down a book, the first thing I do is tab out, tab out each section and chapter. And then when I go through it, when I finally start going through it, I highlight. I highlight each topic as I go through. I get to the exams. Well, I get to the end of the hands-on. I go through the hands-on. I go through the questions and make no cards. But a lot of times, like I'm, I like to read and I love to know information. So I highlight, and it seems like it writes it in my brain. That may not make sense to you, but for me, if I'm going back through this book, all the key topics will stand out because I actually highlighted them. And so in the future, it'll help. And I have been doing that forever. This is my CCNA book. Quick confession, like I'm not the smartest guy in the room. I actually failed my ICND2, but I mean, I failed it once, went back in there and knocked it out. You can't let that discourage you. Here's my CCN, CCNP um, route book, same thing. I tab it out, I go through it and I highlight highlight everything. And then I take these exam questions and I go through the exam questions. Another thing, a lot of times they'll give you these network designs in the book. I'll go through these network designs and then create them in Packet Tracer and I'll even create them in my home lab. And that helps me tremendously. So once, I, once again, I go through the whole book, read it front to back. And if I gotta read it twice, I'll read it twice. I mean, you, you'll be surprised how much you actually read in those books. Because with all the letters, numbers, diagrams and stuff, it's really, even though it's a thousand pages, it's really not that much. 
Here's my CCMP switch book. Same thing. I tab it out. I go through. And I highlight. I make no cards from the questions. See, and here's an example of one of my study questions. We're going through all the questions. And, and until I get all these right, I'm not ready. And again, and I actually failed my CCMP switch. And I was hot. But Cisco ended up giving me a retake because there, there was a glitch in the test. At the time, I was actually working on, um, I was actually um, configuring a network that was nothing but switches. It had over 70 switches. So I know for a fact that I knew CCMP information when it came to switch front and back. And then my T-shoe, same thing. Now the T-shoe book, um, it's not the best book to read. I'm not gonna lie. Because all it really is is troubleshooting and lining. But anyway, I, I tab it out. In this book, I did more studying in the lab than I did read this book. I don't even think I ended up finishing the book because I just got tired of reading the same thing over and over on how to troubleshoot things. Like you don't really learn anything new except how to debug and troubleshoot information. But I still read it, highlighted front and back the majority of the book. And that's how I learn information. And currently, I'm working on my MCSA. I don't know why I always get these um, these Cybex books, but I, I like them. They, they work for me. Same thing. I'm working on, what is it? The 410, the 7410. Tab it out. Go through it. Highlight it. And as you can see, I, I read it front to back. But that works for me. That may not work for you. You may like videos or something. All right, what's up, YouTube fam? We're on my laptop. And as you can see, I got that Dark Side of the Moon, um, Pink Floyd. Love that album. But anyway, the first thing I want to show you is uh, when you're studying for your exam, one of the things that I found very useful was Notepad++. It, what it does is take um, your different um, .txt files. It tabs them. You can run scripts from here and all that. But what I use it, for is saving all my commands. And for instance, here's one right here um, on like aliases or something like that. So if you're using like um, Packet Trace or you're using, um, if you're constantly configuring routers at work or switches at work, what you can do is take the configs and just save them here. Cause normally when you're using Notepad, I'll pull up Notepad. When you use a Notepad, you'll have a million of these notepad applications open. But now what you can do is take those same um, .txt files and just tab them into one location. So if you're building switch one, building one, switch two, building two, switch three, building three, you can have them all here. Or if you just have switch one and you can just change the host name of the switch. If you have switch one and you build that out and now you have a new switch plugged in that you need to configure. You can just change the name to switch to and then just copy, paste, etc. It, it makes everything pretty convenient. And if you write scripts and stuff, you can test your scripts, your JavaScripts and things also in Notepad++. It also has like a comparison tool. So if you have multiple scripts um, and you want to compare to find the differences, you can do it in Notepad++. Um, plus plus. There's a plugin for it. So to find Notepad++, plus plus, you'll just go to Google, type in Notepad++, plus plus, and then you'll click the download link. Verify that you're clicking the right link. It should be notepad-plus-plus.org um, is that the actual website. I'll leave a link in the description. If you would like to use Notepad++, plus plus, feel free to download it. Um, leave a comment or a like you know letting me know how you like notepad and if it works for you or if you already use it it's pretty cool but well if you don't know which version of windows linux or whatever that you're running um, you can download the 32-bit version here it makes it easy because 32-bit will run on 64-bit you won't have any conflicts so that's notepad plus plus i use that every day now the next tool that I use is OneNote. OneNote. Now I have Microsoft Office 2016 Professional 
you may not have that. So there's a, and I'll pull up my virtual. I've never used it. Uh, yeah, I get busy on the virtual game. <laughs> As you can see, I got my, I got a whole um, 2012 lab over here that I built inside of VMware Station 10. I'll get, to, I'll get to that eventually. I'm not there yet to, to put all my, put all that information out there. I'm trying to focus on the Cisco. Once we get everybody certified, because that's the goal, is to help as many people possible change their lives with that CCNA. Once we do that, I'll go ahead and move on to some VM stuff. All right, so on Windows 10, if you don't have, if you don't have Office 2013, I believe it's in 2010 also, or 2016, OneNote comes a part of Windows 10, but it's a cloud version. You can't store anything local. What you'll do is you'll log on with your Skype account, your Microsoft Live account, whatever you may have. You just log on here. I'll show you how I use it. OneNote. If you're, let's say you deal with it, you're working on your CCNA, you can create a Cisco folder and start storing your different sections of your, that you're studying for, like OSPF. You create a section called OSPF, and in that section, you can create an outline. So right here, I have the different LSA types, type one through type seven. And from there, you can create, let's say, OSPF configs, OSPF configs. And then I would do show IP OSPF, and then I could give a definition of what it is, you know, from there. Or if I just want to do a, a, new, a new tab from here, or a new page, and call it, let's see, OSPF type three. And we'll move it here. And then we can also make it a sub page. Now, since this is the Cisco notebook that we're working on, let's create a new section and let's call it um, CCNA. We created CCNA. Now you can take a file and let's say I take this file and we can add it in there. Now you can take packet tracer files and save them into the notebook so you can kind of keep everything in one place. Now, this goes right in the notebook, one in right into OneNote is there. We could also do a new page and call it CCNA exam topics. So we can kind of keep this all organized. So we go to Google and type CCNA exam topics in Google. And then we go to the learning network on Cisco. And once we're there, we could do one or two things. We could copy this link here and put it into OneNote. Or let's say we want to do the 125 and this is it. We could copy this page and we could take this link. I'll just show you. So I take this link and I copy it here into OneNote. Boom, just like that. But there's another option. So if you see something on this page that you want, you do a uh, Windows key S um, at the same time. You do a screenshot of what you want, and then we just paste it into OneNote. OneNote makes it pretty convenient to just store all your data. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. Now, that's one note on Windows 10 Professor. I didn't go too in depth. I just kind of wanted to keep it real simple. I may do something. Um, I may do a video if you like. So that wraps it up. I hope you found these videos informational. Tune in Thursday morning. The subnetter video, volume one, is dropping. Hopefully, you guys will enjoy this video. I hope you enjoyed this current video, so please feel free to leave comments in the section below. It's, it's been nothing but love. I can't thank you all enough for the support that you all have been giving. It's been fun. Hopefully, 
we can continue to bring you valuable content that makes your life a little easier and also motivates you to pursue your career goals. It's not easy. When you got kids, like Network Chuck just had a baby. Congrats, bro. It's beautiful. I got three kids. He has three kids. You know, I had to do that with my CCMP, working towards my goals with a family. It's not easy. He's doing the same thing, and I'm sure many of you also are. But it can be done if you just have a little faith, a little motivation, and a whole lot of consistency. It can be done. Trust me. I know it for a fact. And also, I want to send a shout out to Zach at IT Questions. Bro, I appreciate the shout out you gave me last week on your YouTube live. Amazing. Can't thank you enough. And again, I thank each and every one of you. I want to thank my wife. She's my rock. She's amazing. Awesome. My mom, aunt, cousin, friends, countrymen. <laughs> it's, it's been dope. Look out for the subnet video Thursday. I'm excited about this. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Hopefully we can continue, which we will. Peace.